This episode of Plastic Weekly is brought to you by Glenn Hayford and the rest of my Patreon supporters who help make this show happen by donating a dollar or two each week. It gets me so psyched to hear that this podcast is being heard by folks in Australia. So thanks, Glenn, for not just listening, but actually supporting the effort. I can't wait to bring you more episodes in the new year. A couple quick things before we get started. First, thanks to everyone who came out to climb at Grand River Rocks last Thursday for Climb for Ludovic. The place was packed, the climbs were fun, the prizes were sick, and thousands of dollars were raised to help support Ludovic in his fight with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I think the word community is overused in this sport, but that night was a pretty unbelievable show of how supportive everyone is. Nice job, everybody. And secondly, my old home gym in Burlington, Ontario is hosting their big annual bouldering event that's Blockbuster at Climbers Rock on January 13th. Limited registration is available for the open category, but there's a $5,000 prize pool, so it's worth fighting for a spot. And of course, lots of space for recreational climbers as well. Follow them on Instagram at Climbers Rock for details on how to register. It looks like they'll probably be doing a live stream this year, so hopefully I'll get to be a part of that, and maybe I'll get to implement some of the features I talked about a few episodes ago. I'll share the URL if it does go down. I hope you'll watch. Today's episode is the second part of my interview with Jeremy Dowsett, the man behind Climbing Hold Review, which is now known as Outdoor Gear Review. The last episode was spent mostly talking about holds and how the site got started, so make sure you check out that episode to get caught up. In this segment, we talk about some of the struggles we've experienced as little climbing media startups, his time traveling around to videotape comps back when no one was doing their own comp videos, and why he's transitioning the site to cover outdoor equipment. If you haven't checked out his videos, hop on YouTube and search for Climbing Hold Review so you can see everything that they're doing now and you can follow along with everything we're about to talk about. I hope you like it. You know, kind of stuff. I guess that's fair. Yeah, totally. Um, You mentioned something and, you know, as we start talking about criticisms and the fact Mm -hmm. that you mentioned, you know, you've been sued before for a review you wrote and I don't know what review that was and I don't know if it was, you know, I I doubt you were trying to be malicious or anything like that, but, um, you know, I'm the new guy on this scene when it comes to like startup climbing media and there have been podcasts before me and reviewing sites and news sites and video makers and bloggers and like everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when I, when I hear these stories, that stuff scares me a lot because, you know, (laughs) I have, I've got a, a, like a handful of really great donors who are incredible and like donating a dollar or two for every episode. That's crazy. And so it covers the most basic part of making the podcast. That's really cool. But otherwise, you know, this is a money sink, right? Like we're just putting money into it, but we like doing it. And maybe it, you know, is a, is a good thing to build a future career off of, but I'm talking to people and there's stuff I'm going to say and there's stuff they're going to say and sometimes maybe not everyone will like it. I can't handle a lawsuit like straight up and down, right? You know, I've got a lot of friends who are lawyers, which is excellent, but I certainly can't afford to pay them. This isn't their area of expertise. Um, That stuff is scary as shit. And I don't know how to how to deal with that uh, as just like some friggin late 20s dude in a basement with a microphone. Like it's Um, just too much, man. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pull the um, – I'll actually pull a reference from your podcast. Um, Ian Powell said something um, in in his interview, um, well, I think it was a couple of podcasts ago, and it was edited later because he felt that it was what? It was um, derogatory to his own brand? Uh, so – Ian got in touch with me. He was, there was a little bit of pressure from, I, I think it was everybody at Kilter kind of listened back to it and said, you know, this doesn't sound too good. And it was, um, I, I don't want to, it's, this is weird, right? Cause I don't want to dig up. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to dig up something that makes people feel bad, but it, you know, no, no, it's, but, it's but basically along the lines of, you know, I worked at a climbing gym for a really long time. Right. So 
roughly yeah. along the lines of me working at a climbing gym. Somebody comes in and they ask, hey, is this safe? And I say, fucking yeah, climbing's totally safe. And, and then I they bust an ankle yeah, yeah, and exactly. I just completely lied to them. So it's kind of along those lines where, you know, he said something completely off the cuff that's entirely reasonable for anybody that works in the industry, but they yeah. didn't want it to be misconstrued, right? No, which is fine. And this is, this is you know, Ian, Ian is... Um, Ian and his brand and the people behind him and Kilter are self-censoring. Um, I have spent like I have in the can an interview with a very, very top, top, very top. Well, that's really bad English, and I'm English. Um, <laughs> a, a top Canadian root setter that's very well known, and I've got some great stories that I can share with you about root setters. Um, but I have, I have, I have in the can. I have the video of. An interview that I did with one of these guys, and the editing we did on that interview is probably the most, probably the harshest editing I've ever done. And there's a there's a there's a B roll of all of the stuff that didn't actually make it to the full video, and it's called "Holy shit, did we really say that?" And <laughs> like, e- even even after ten years, um. I still, even though I'm being very honest about the climbing holds, some of the way I say things and some of the inflections I use, um, you know, even I do edit out some of the language and some of the um, inflection. I don't ever, these days, I've I've got it down pretty well that I can actually normally do like a a walkthrough on holds in like one take. Um, maybe with you know a couple a couple a couple of cuts here and there, but you have to be a little bit self editing. Now, with you, it's slightly different because you know you, you're starting out and you can't self edit um, me. You can edit me out later because obviously we're, we're recording this and you can you, you can you can you can take it out. Yeah. You know, you know, I I learned the hard way that I'd send the reviews and the videos to the companies to make sure that they were happy with it. Um, It just so happened that when they weren't happy with it, I published it anyway. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But, you know, I've always been, you know, forthright, I don't know how it works for you, that you're going to send me the podcast and let me listen to my own droning voice, you know, for however long (laughs) this takes. Um, So I I can find out if there's going to be something inflammatory that may hurt my career Yeah. And well, here's the thing is like, I can edit you out, right? I can edit anything you want to say, but then you can come back at me for like misrepresenting your opinions. Right. And I'm not going to send this to you after like, you're, you're going to hear this when it gets released. But at the same time, I'm fairly careful. I, you know, for just working at a climbing gym for so long, being in charge of the desk operations and how we relate with customers, I've, and also one of the gym owners had a, a strong legal background, um, I'm, I've developed the antennas to, you know, hear things that, uh, that we worry about. And I'm almost mad at myself for letting the thing with, uh, with Ian slip because it was like right in front of me, but I have so much respect for Ian that I just, you know, if he says something, I'm sure he's comfortable with it. Oh, yeah. And that said, you know, everybody in climbing is not, not really sure how to deal with media, right? Like when you come on the show, when anybody comes on the show, I'm not, under any false pretenses recording you. You know I'm recording this. You know it's an audio recording. Yep. Um, I I don't, you know, tell you, oh, I've stopped recording and, you know, let's talk about this salacious thing or anything like that. Like, I'm very clear when we start and when we finish. Yeah. Um, there's no gray area, but all of us, including, you know, myself, we're not very practiced with dealing with a microphone in our face. Um, you see it in our athletes who are usually really boring interview subjects at World yeah, Cups. Uh, you see it in a lot of the interviews I've done where, you know, some people talk too much. Some people barely answer a question and don't really expand. <laughs> some people are very sheepish about being honest about things. Um, and it's just, you know, we're super new to this. And it's it's so rough to go from trying to coax more intriguing stuff out of people just to, you know, make them sound human and then on the other side of things, knowing that in our industry, especially down in the States, everybody's so terrified of of a lawsuit and probably for good reason, but everybody's so freaking scared of this stuff. Like it's, uh, I definitely choose 
my questions and interview topics aware <laughs> of not wanting to run into areas where everybody would freak the hell out. Um, which, is, which, is, which is hilarious. But the problem is, is like you may ask me a question and then I can go completely off the page. And then you have the, you have the beauty of the, of the edit afterwards. But like I was saying, like, you like, you're not, you, you may not be used to actually uh, sitting with a microphone in front of you, but, after 10 years of sitting in front of a video camera talking about climbing holds, I'm actually really quite comfortable, really quite comfortable with it. And generally, most things I say is not anything that I wouldn't say to if I met the person to their face. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm fairly cut and dry, but I, I have self-edited, you know, when I've done reviews um, and I am quote unquote media trained. Um, because of I, I do end up in front of a camera occasionally for for my job, so I, I am I am media trained to a sense. But you know, you, you're you're learning, and you know, don't get me wrong. I've listened to all of your stuff. Um, I think I think you're doing I think you're doing a superb job. And the fact that only if you'd not even put up that Ian, you edited it, and because Ian wanted something out of it. I doubt that anyone would have noticed. You could have done it and it would have been like a, a ship passing in the night. No one would have noticed. But the fact that you actually put that there and I mentioned it is because I'm like, ooh, what was that? Do I still have that saved somewhere? Because I want to find out what it is. Like mm -hmm. it's a little bit it's a little bit salacious. Well, um, and the thing for that is because, you know, I, I'm not a journalist. I am a hundred percent not a journalist. I don't know how to do that stuff. I I don't consider myself a reporter. At the same time, just by interviewing you, maybe I do venture into that territory. I'm not sure how it works, but I felt uncomfortable like kind of setting a precedent for myself of having something out in public for 16 hours and then editing it and changing it at the request of the interviewee. I wasn't comfortable with editing that and putting it out again and not saying anything about it. I was really concerned and again, stuck between a rock and a hard place because <laughs> you want your audience to respect you, but also you want Ian Powell, who is, you know, an incredible dude. You want him to respect you and appreciate you. And, and, you know, and I don't think he would have held a grudge or anything like that, but I wanted to help him out. And it was, you know, a reasonable enough request that I was honestly fine with it. It didn't affect the content really of the thing at all, but it's just, it's, I, I couldn't, it was really scary to possibly let people know that, Hey, I'll do an interview with you. And if you don't like it, I'll just edit it and make it however you want. And we'll just never tell anybody. Like I couldn't feel comfortable with that just yet. It's, it's see for you, for you, for you, it's a learning process for me now. It's kind of like second nature. Um, when I sit in front of a camera and I, I talk about stuff, you know, you know, I, I you know, I drink a beer occasionally. Um, you know, I, I swear occasionally. I'm actually quite good these days and not swearing. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a learning process and, you know, putting out content for, you know, our audience and our audience is essentially, you know, it, you know, we, we cross over for, for audience, you know, um, for people that can listen to, you know, Plastic Weekly and people that read Climbing Hole Review and watch the videos and stuff, we kind of, you know, we kind of cross the streams Ghostbuster style a little bit because it's the same. You're, you're giving it to the same people that probably read or watch my videos as, um, as, as, you know, anyone else. Like, you know, um, I read, I, I listen, I read, I read a podcast. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> um, I read, I, I listen to, um, the Jam Crack podcast from um, Nal, uh, Nal Grimes. Yep. Nal Grimes. And he is the hardest motherfucker to understand. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's such, you know, I'm like, I've got an accent. I know that. But Nile is like ridiculous. I, I, I love listening to his stuff. It's, you know, it, it's great, but it's a very English thing. So that, you know, and, you know, I grew up, I grew up with like the whole English climbing scene. So, you know, he pushes it a little bit, but that's great. But that's very, very English. We've, North America and, you know, the sutastic um, nature that is, you know, America and Canada and North America. Um, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful. But I respect you for actually putting up the edit. And you, you'll, you'll just learn as you're going, 
you know, you'll you'll go back to someone before you publish it um, on iTunes or anything. It's like, hey, here's the offline between you know one minute and three and one minute and six. You know, you say you know this. You know, do you really want that in there? It's a it's a learning process. It it, it really is, and you know, you're you're young into it, but you'll you'll learn next time next time your spidey sense when you see it and you, and you, you, like you said it's right there in front of you you'll know you'll, you'll know it and you'll be like ah this is this is getting hit in the cutting room floor yeah i i i think uh especially after that episode i think it's it's gonna be something that i pay more attention to uh mm-hmm. and hopefully uh nail it next time so i don't have to deal with that it's um staying on the media track stuff um you kind of made a commitment with the site where you wanted to post regular content, right? Uh, Writing reviews, things like that. But it's, it wasn't your main job. You had a job. Um, There's a lot that comes with these side projects and something that I faced, you know, I started this thing back in March uh, and this is kind of like my third go at making it a consistent thing. And I, (laughs) my dad called me out the second I told him I was going to call it plastic weekly. He was like, "Ah, that sounds like a bit of a commitment, man. Um, And the weekly thing has been really hard to do, especially in the (laughs) beginning. Um, And that said, I was working a full-time job back then. I'm not working at all right now. So I have all the time in the world for this until I run out of money. It should be plastic daily. Come on, stop fucking around. Yeah, well, no, I would. Uh, I've. I. I need time to play my video games and like you know other stuff. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm curious if, as you went through this process of running CHR, if you had to deal with motivation issues, if you had to deal with time constraint issues, and how you dealt with that, because you know I know for myself. Obviously, I'm doing this, and so there's kind of a public commitment to it. But there's a lot of people listening who might be interested in starting climbing related media or might be looking into shaping or, you know, anything. And, you know, you got to put in practice if you want to do it well. So for the people that are struggling with that kind of motivation stuff, just wondering if you have any advice or any stories about that. Um, as, oh, as soon as you start anything like this, you know, like, Thank God I didn't call my 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 website. You know, climbing holds weekly. Um, <laughs> I'll take the hit for the team on that one. Yeah, please. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a sinkhole. It really is. Um, like I said before, like the amount of time it takes for me to, you know, to review a climbing hold. You know, whether it's quote unquote free or not, um, the amount of time that I spend with you know a set of climbing holds. It's a lot of time. I do a lot of things with it, um, you know, setting, sitting, recording, taking photos, you know, climbing. But it's one of the things I love. So you don't really notice the time, the time disappear. The people that will notice the time disappearing is your loved ones and your girlfriend. Climbing Hold Review basically ruined two relationships. <laughs> because <laughs> I spent so much time just focused on this project that, you know, I let other things slip. And that's the problem. Like, Plastic Weekly is not so bad. You know, you can spend a couple of hours, you know, today talking to me. And then, you know, you can... You know, spend a couple of days editing it, ding, 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 you know, hour here, hour there, not too bad, you know. But for me, it was like, I'm at the gym, I'm in the wall, I've got people over, I'm, take, I'm, doing, I'm doing footage, you know. It, 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 it's a real, it is a commitment. And to know what you're getting into, you know, if you love it that much and you enjoy doing it that much, and I really do, um, then, then, then you'll just do it. But what I have to say to people is, when you do do it, remember to stop, remember to breathe, remember to take a break, and remember that you know, you have a girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, whatever. Please, stop. Cook them dinner. Don't spend all of your time doing this. You know, a lot, a lot time. You know, a lot time for it. It's like you know, generally these days when I get in from work, you know, my girlfriend gets in a little bit later than me. The, the first thing I do, apart from crack a beer, is fire my computer up, and I can get a little bit of editing done, and then if she's cooking, I've got a bit more time, and then I'll stop and spend time with her. Like, I try and allot my time rather than, you know, 
massive 24-hour chunks of time because when we were doing the Tour de Bloc, and this is a segue, um, when we were doing the Tour de Bloc videos, which we don't really need to do anymore because most gyms seem to be, you know, like, look at the um, Block Shop Open last week. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. It's like, hey, someone just learned how to – someone got a mixing desk and a bunch of um, bunch of cameras for about five grand. And you can stream on YouTube. You don't need me and Chris running around like lunatics actually filming that stuff anymore. But when we were doing that, like, you know, we'd be in Burlington and we're in Montreal. So that's probably about a five-hour drive. Yeah, that, that's my the, gym right there, Climber's Rock, yeah. <laughs> Climber's Rock. So we're at Climber's Rock. You know, me and Chris – Despite the fact that we could probably, at that time, we probably could have just about scraped into the open finals, we climbed intermediate so we could film the qualifiers and the finals for open. And when we got in the car, the cameras got plugged into a laptop, a shitty laptop, um, and we'd be offloading the um, footage on that laptop in the middle of winter on the way home back to Montreal. And then we'd pull 12 hour shifts editing the video to get it out the next day, wow. which is now I think about it, that's stupid. And why do we do that? <laughs> but, 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 but that, that, that was, that was, our, that's how, that was our level of commitment. We'd have a driver. I'd sleep in the car. Chris would offload all the footage. I'd get back. We'd get it on the computer and then we just, go at it 12 hour shifts until it was done because i don't think i think we put the tour de block videos out 24 to maybe 36 hours after the competition happened because we wanted to beat everyone else to the to the to to the youtube to youtube um and it's it's hard and then you see other people come into the market say for climbing um hold reviews you see other people come in and i'm like ooh. It's it's like a challenger one, player two as yeah. a right. <laughs> I, I see it. It's like that. I'm like, excellent. I'm gonna let you run for a few months. Watch what you're doing, and trust me, the eyes of a fucking hawk watching everything you do, and they'd be like, oh, you do this good. You do this better than we do. I'll just I'll I'll just take what we do, add your stuff, and do it better. Is it, it for me? For me, it was it was more motivation when these other people turned up, yeah. started doing their own thing. It was like, oh, really? I started this, like, like, and this is really blowing my. I started it. I start. I started this thing, and I'm like, you're gonna do that, and you're gonna do it badly. Oh, okay. You gonna do that, and you gonna do it well. Excellent. I'm gonna take what you're doing and like, like, just mold it into what we're doing, and actually make us better. Um, for for you doing that content but um i don't i don't i don't see you having that much of a problem because you know climbing holds is a niche market but what you're doing there was another podcast i'm trying to remember what it was it was a well, video podcast what, what was it it was in a university it was in a university basement ian was on it so was clark I don't know what you're talking about. A video. Well, I know like John Blomquist was doing Chalk Talk Climbing Podcast. It was uh, audio only, which was excellent. Um, I I haven't really heard from him, but it seems like it just kind of petered off. You know, he's got life and stuff. Um, but I don't know what you're uh, uh, like. Was I know there's it, the. Was it the beta podcast? It was in it was in Boulder. Ian was on it, and I remember Ian being on it with a piece of paper in his lap, saying, "Don't swear." And it was him and Clark, and um, Clark was drinking rum and coke, and Ian was drinking Monster Energy drinks. Like he was pounding back Monster Energy drinks late at night. It was it, it was a really it was it wasn't a podcast. It was a video thing. Was it the beta podcast? I'd, I'll find it and I'll send it to you. So yeah, you the only thing it. I can think of is there's a there's a, um, a radio show out of Boulder, and I can't remember what it's called either. Uh, it was that, but they did they did they they put the video out. Yeah, had, yeah, yeah, and they do that for yeah, every that single show. That one, that was that was great. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I I don't know if it's if it's. I don't think I, it's still going. I kind of assumed it was like I don't I don't subscribe or watch it or anything like that. I do it like when I'm researching somebody because like mm. I think Ian's been on it like three or four times or whatever. Um, and you'll find like everybody in the Boulder bubble has been on that show at some point, so you can learn and, a lot from it. Uh, and Ian's, Ian's got a mouth like a dirty sailor as well. So <laughs> like, the fact, like the fact, like kudos to him, the fact that he got through three of those without swearing. Oh, that's impressive. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh and I mean that's that's one of those podcasts I feel like it's uh it trends towards outdoor topics. Uh and when they start talking about like indoor competitive stuff, I found the hosts weren't as experienced with that and their questions yeah. became a little more vague. So you kind of had to do some work. You had to pull some of the weight if you were the guest. Um but some really excellent like and those were like hour long shows, right? Yeah, but uh, that, and they got some. They had a lot of big names on that show as well. Yeah, they did. No, like, there was some good lot, stuff. A lot, of, a lot of really, really big names, and it, it kind of, it kind of flamed, it kind of flamed out. Um, but I think, I think you're in a format where, you know, because of Skype and because of technology, you're actually pretty good. You know, you you could you could you know, you know you could you could talk to Ben Moon about the evolution of the Moon Board and everything else. You could, you could do that. Um, and that's 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 really cool, you know. Like, but making content for a small community, which was the original question, like, is there challenges? Yeah, there is. It's always it's a time sink. You've really got to want to do it, and it's hard putting out content. And your dad, like, you know, high five to your dad, you know, weekly, weekly, weekly. Yeah, like that. That's a commitment. But when I do something like that, I'm gonna do it. And I'm if I say weekly it's weekly i'm gonna do it and you 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 haven't you haven't missed a week so far right you're still doing pretty good no but i I mean like i did three episodes in like march april and then like five of them in may and then i started back again in september right so i I, I like hey on come may to september it's like it's outside being in the sun climbing and drinking weather so that's fine i don't see that being a problem oh yeah i wish i was doing stuff that cool but uh (laughs) but (laughs) But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a different thing, but I think you, you mentioned some good advice in there and that's stuff I gotta, I gotta figure out, but I mean, also just my personality. Um, I don't know. Sometimes motivation is something I, I struggle with, but uh, especially now while I'm not working outside of this, it's definitely easier and hopefully, oh, uh, gotcha. hopefully I keep it up. Um, if I, uh, if I ever stop, I wanted to revisit the tour to block videos thing just really quickly. Um, uh-huh. why did you start doing that? Like, were the people in the States doing something similar or like, what got you interested in, in, in going, you know, like across Eastern Canada and filming all this stuff and putting it out? Why was that important to you? Um, I don't have a, I don't have a solid reason for that. Um, I think because of, you know, climbing hole review and everything else we were there and because we were filming you know walkthroughs and stuff and we had the equipment it's like ah you know why don't we do this you know and we were there climbing anyway and no one else was doing it no one else was putting out the content for you know you know there's a couple of really good photographers on the tour that you know went around but no one was putting out any footage of the competition and you know i'm a i'm a child of you know vhs and whatever else and i remember in 96 there was the um there was a ben moon jerry moffitt uh sean miles movie came out that called the that was called the real thing um you know then there's like hard grit and everything else and i think with one or two of those videos there was some like um extra kind of dvds with um competition footage on them and there was not much on youtube no one was really streaming that much and it's like well i understand watch the finals anyway so why not just film it and put out the content it just it just it just made sense at the time and luigi who runs the tour is a is a is a great guy and he gave us you know pretty much you know really great access let us on the mats and stuff for filming stuff you know my only regret with it is i wish we had more cameras and more people at the time because you know there were some really spectacular competitions and i met a lot of really really great people through um through through filming those competitions and and people people liked the videos people started following climbing hold review because they knew tour de block was you know like what november till march april may time they knew that we were going to throw out a bunch of tour de block footage and we got a lot of we got a lot of you know youtube hits um on those videos but but they were they were painful to make that was like a you know drive to burlington compete in intermediate or whatever film qualifiers 
film finals, get back in the car. It was just, it was like the most vicious, you know, 24 to 36 hours known to mankind. And I don't know why I put the um, impetus on this has to get out within 24 hours of the competition. There was no one else that was really competing with us for that. I think it was just a matter of I've got a day job and I want to get this off my plate as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. No, that's true. Um, you announced earlier this year that you'd be changing the focus of climbing holder view, uh, to start including outdoor gear or maybe even putting like more of a focus on outdoor gear than on climbing holds. Is that mostly a reflection of what you're spending more time doing these days? Like more time just kind of being outdoorsy or is a lot of it, uh, just like a change in your interest in terms of reviews? No, because if it was a tra change in my interest, then it would be like, um, little model steam trains that I have and I go ride on Sundays. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wish I was, I wish I was, I wish I was fucking joking. No, um, that sounds awesome. Uh, it's actually kind of fun. You should come down and try it. It's actually really <laughs> surprisingly fun. Sounds um, good. Um, no, it's like whenever I've climbed, I've always camped and you know, my focus is always climbing holds and volumes and, you know, shoes and stuff. But I did a, um, you know, I found out my doctor's like, look, you should really not climb so much anymore. Your fingers are basically, basically fucked. Um, and I'm like, hey, doc, is there anything you can do for me? And he's like, yeah, I can cut both your fingers off and you'll be fine. And <laughs> like, my doctor has a really bad sense of humor. He's, he's actually a lovely guy. He's like, I can give you like cortisone, um, cortisone shots in your knuckles, which trust me, because they do it with like no anesthetic into your knuckle. Yeah. I did it once. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's not gonna happen again unless my fingers get really bad because it Yikes. sucks. It's like oh yeah, it may swell a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Jesus, the most painful thing. No, it was actually more painful than when I destroyed my ankle. It's really horrible. But um, I've always I've always camped. You know, when you go out and you know, Fontainebleau camping. You know, Val David, you go camp. You know, you go to all over the place and you just camp. And I'm like, well, I'm focusing on all, all of these climbing holds, but I have all this camping gear that I keep buying. Why not, you know, kind of split the difference, you know, spend some time, you know, doing some reviews on stuff that has a much, let's face it, there's a broader audience for people camping than there is for climbing holds. Um, you know, I did a review on the um, Petzl Grigory, Petzl won't talk to me anymore, um, versus the Mad Rock Lifeguard. And that got like 11,000 hits in, you know, two months, which is, you know, as many hits as some of the Tour de Bloc videos we've had that have been up there for five years. I would it's, cut off my middle fingers to uh, to get that kind of hits on this podcast. So, yeah, I feel you. Oh, don't, don't, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll do my little best to, to help, you, help you out. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but... Um, <laughs> oh, that's why you're interviewing me. You want the hits. Oh, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like such a bore now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's a shift in focus. No, because I still I still climb. You know, I still buy climbing shoes. I still use climbing products. My 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 shift is never going to be away from climbing. You know, right now behind me, and we don't have video going. I have just received a um, the new blank slate, um, you know, the modular thing that goes above the door frames that holds hangboards and whatever yeah. else. Um, so yeah, it's it's. Don't worry, like there's still going to be horrible videos of my face and my horrible accent <laughs> talking about climbing holds on the internet. It's not. It's just gonna not. It's gonna be less less frequent, I guess. All like right. it'll, it'll be it'll be it'll be climbing hold bi-monthly rather than plastic weekly <laughs> cool um i want to thank you so much for spending all this time to talk about holds and climbing media and everything um i you know today just earlier this morning before we talked i took another look through the site and it's it's a museum of the last 10 years of climbing holds. Like if you go back right to the start, you know, oh, you God. see stuff that, you know, Technic just put out, which very quickly wasn't sold anymore. And you see, you know, there's so many holds on that site that I'm sure 
the pictures you have up there might be the only remaining pictures of them anywhere. And half of those holds are probably broken and thrown out at whatever gyms they got sold to. So for anybody that gets a chance, well, you all have a chance. Everybody should go visit Climbing Holder View and just start from the very end and just scroll through that stuff. And it just knocks your socks off because I, you know, I showed up late to this whole thing and getting to see the process through so many companies coming and going and the companies that exist today, how they started out and, you know, the the attitude towards the holds that we know so well now, how we were talking about them back when they first showed up. It's uh, it's really interesting to start back again in 2007. Dude, thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Um, like, please keep, please keep doing it. It says Plastic Weekly. Please do it weekly because I listen to it and I love it. I think it's a great show and I think you're doing a great thing for the community. I'll do my best. I'll talk to you soon, Jeremy. You take care, buddy. Bye. Ciao. That's it for this episode of Plastic Weekly. Thanks to Jeremy Dowsett for answering my questions and thanks to you guys for listening. Plastic Weekly is presented and produced by me, Tyler Norton. If you like this episode, please consider donating a dollar or two each episode to my Patreon at patreon.com slash plasticweekly. It helps me keep this thing going, and I've got stickers for those of you who ante up. If not, I'd love it if you left a rating or review in your podcast app. Those things help people find the show, and they just make me feel good. Make sure you visit PlasticWeekly.com to find footnotes, references, and other bonus content related to our episodes, including links to the old Tour de Block videos that Jeremy shot and a photo of him riding his model steam trains. I laughed at first, I'll admit it, but I think I'm going to have to get out there and get him to let me try it out. It looks like my kind of fun. If you want to get in touch with me, you can leave a comment at PlasticWeekly.com and you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can send me an email to Tyler at PlasticWeekly.com with your comments, concerns, questions, compliments. Just tell me you're out there. Somewhere. Good luck to everyone competing this weekend, including at British Columbia's Open National Series event and at locals across North America. We'll be thinking about you. Talk to you next week.